welcome to the Angel Mystic Podcast. I am super excited you are listening because this is where spiritually open minds can come together to explore the wonders of angels, spiritual connections, and the art of manifesting. Hosted by me, Amanda Took, the Angel Mystic, your spiritual midwife to help you on your journey to a fulfilling and happy life. You may have seen me on ITV, Channel 4, or even in Fate and Fortune magazine. In each episode, we will delve into the mystical world of angels, offering you insights, guidance, practical tools to deepen your connection with the upstairs so that you can find inner peace, happiness, joy, and create the life that you want. Tune in for weekly fun conversations, transformational insights that will elevate your spiritual journey and awaken your inner mystic. Please hit subscribe now as we embark on a transformational adventure with the Angel Mystic Podcast. Welcome back to the Angel Mystic Podcast and boy, boy oh boy have I got a really amazing guest for you today. This is someone that I've recently met in the last couple of months and quite honestly she has blown me away so I had to have her on my podcast. So let me introduce to you Pamela McDougall, all the way from sunny Scotland, who has a business called Eagle Spirit Healing. And she is a clairvoyant spirit medium. So welcome, Pam. Delighted to have you on the show. Thank you, Amanda. I am so excited to be here and have this chat with you today. Definitely. I love listening to your accent. It's just so soothing, <laughs> comforting. I just love your accent. It's it's really lovely. I want to delve straight in, if we can, to the very first time um, I met you, which is, like I say, it's a couple of months ago. And we met at an event. And there's one particular uh, part of that event where you really struck me. We were sat and we were having dinner. And uh, we were sat next to each other at this table and you were talking about yourself. And I don't know, it was like you went um, illuminated. You just lit up when you spoke about yourself Um, and you absolutely hooked me in because you told me little bits about your journey, about what you've been on and I've learned so much from you in a short space of time. I'm really, really grateful of that. But you actually told me, you know, I'm a bigger woman. Um, and, you know, I suppose as a, as a thin person wanting to get out, even though I've always been quite happy about being a bigger person. I mean, my curves even have curves. So, you know, it's, it's all good in that sort of way. But, you know, as I've got older, I've really wanted to sort of try and lose weight and be healthier. And when you told me what you'd been through and that you'd lost, was it nine stone, you said? <laughs> nine yeah. stone, nine yep. Stone. Uh-huh. And you come, you know, through some really difficult periods um, in terms of health and wellness. And it just blew my socks off. And I just wanted to learn more about you and how you'd done it. And I feel so um, inspired by the conversations that we've had up to now. I really do. Um, so, yeah, tell us a bit about yourself, Pam. Oh, well, gosh, where do we start? <laughs> um, well, since you've hit on the weight loss, we'll start there. Um, it it took, yeah, it's been quite a journey, Amanda. It's been quite a journey. And what we were talking about that, at that table that day is the fact that four years ago, I was um, over 20 stone. I was um, disabled with a whole host of mental health and physical health conditions. I couldn't walk without a stick. Um, I was killing myself with toxicity, self-neglect, and um, I was miserable. And I was only 39. Um, a lot took me to wake up, but I woke up and um, something inside of me shifted and I decided to focus on health. And that was all it was about at the beginning of that journey. I just wanted to feel better. I didn't want to be in pain anymore. And I started to believe 
deep within me somewhere that there was another life to be lived, that surely this wasn't it for me. If I'd carried on the way I was going, I was I was going to die, and probably in a very short space of time. Um, so I, it was a slow process, don't get me wrong. It took about a year of really working on my mindset before I could even touch my weight. Um, it was all about learning about my my thoughts, my feelings, my actions. Why did I think the way I thought? Um, uh, where did all of this stuff I picked up come from? Um, what were my beliefs that I held about myself and the world and other things? So I started to read, I started to... oh. I can't even say I started to connect with spirit right at that point because even though I'd been spiritual all my life because of my health and the amount of medication that I was taking, um, all that was blocked. My energy was blocked. So it was about health, the focus at the beginning. I just wanted to feel better. Worked on my mindset, read, learned everything I could about myself and started to really understand myself as energy. One of the biggest things that helped me with that actually was picking up tarot cards. Um, I'd played about with them when I was a young teenager and I knew I could read, but because of the life and the condition that I had, I'd believed that it was crazy and you shouldn't touch it and all of that kind of stuff. But no, I picked up tarot cards, really started understanding it about energy and life began to change. When I started to really understand my energy, the energy of others, the energy of my thoughts, how I felt, what actions I was doing. Yeah, just little by little, day by day, changes started to occur. And every time a little change occurred, I got braver, I got more confident. And within about a year, I was ready to tackle my weight. And because I'd done all that work on myself, like shifting all of the the layers of fear, self-neglect, uh, traumas, turmoil, all of this stuff, learning how to live in the moment, Amanda, when I started to tackle my weight, it just came off in 15 months. Wow. And it stayed off. Uh, that's maybe nine stone less. I'm 11 stone now, I'm a tall girl. Um, but I'm healthy and I'm as surprised as anybody that I got here, you know, but miracles can happen if you change yourself with, from within. And yeah, so it's been a journey. It's been a, an amazing journey and it's so, so inspiring because I know it hasn't just been all, you know, weight and mindset. You know, you've you've had to get through a lot of other things as well, haven't you? And you've done a tremendous yeah. job. You really have. I can remember um some of the conversations that we've had. And, you know, I love the fact, and it sticks in my mind now, is that you say that you were healing yourself. And mm-hmm. I keep reminding myself of that, that I am healing myself because we can all heal ourselves, but we forget that we can do that, you know. Yeah. We don't need to go to healers as such. We can all channel that healing energy. And it's really nice to be reminded that we can all heal ourselves. And it starts with wanting to and believing that we can in our mind. Everything starts within, doesn't it? Our inner world has to change before our outer world will start to change. And the other thing, the other thing in a conversation that we've had recently um, I said to you, oh, I'm self-sabotaging at the moment. I think I'd eaten some things I shouldn't have eaten. And you said, you're not self-sabotaging. You are giving yourself what you needed at that moment. And that, to me, just took all the guilt away. Because we do think, you know, we'll set off on these, you know, regimes or a diet or call it what you will, an eating plan. And then we go off track Or we don't go to the gym when we said we're going to go. And next thing we're thinking we're self-sabotaging ourselves. And hearing you say that, hearing you say that was not self-sabotage. Wow. To be released from that guilty mindset was so liberating. It was incredible. And those two things keep sticking in my mind of what you've taught me. So I'm so grateful that I met you. And you know, what I've taken from you from up to now, and I'm sure you've got lots more that you're going to, you know, 
inspire me with as our conversations continue. It is incredible, really, really incredible. I don't think you realize how inspiring and incredible you are and the light that shines from you is, is, is amazing. People that get to work with you are so lucky. So what sort of women, well, I presume it could be men as well, I suppose, but what sort of people? Yeah, do you- I've actually got a lot of men clients Have too. You? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I've, I've, which I find absolutely fascinating is the more and more people are, um, really wanting to find out about themselves. And I want to go back to your, uh, the conversation about self-sabotage in there. I don't like the energy of that word and everything is energy. It's just another word, another label that we slap on to people and um, ourselves um, that bring out these feelings of guilt and shame. There's no need for it. It's the feelings of guilt and shame that will make you hold on to the weight. And that is one of my biggest realisations in my weight loss journey is if I want a piece of cake with my coffee, I'm going to have it and I'm going to enjoy that. But then I'm going to make the choice after that I really enjoyed that. That gave me what I needed. So I don't need to do it again for a while because I've not beaten myself up about it. But when we beat ourselves up about it, we end up beating the whole chocolate cake because the guilt feelings come up and then we need to repress the guilt feelings. So we start to stuff more down. It's enjoy what you're doing in the moment. Your body's calling for something. Your body needs something. So the the more you can... Be good to yourself. Let yourself just be with it. If you need to lie on the couch and eat a tub of ice cream while watching your favourite movie, do it. You know, everything starts within the brain. Everything starts within the brain and your and your and your thoughts. And it's really important to start to become the observer for, of that, of your brain, how you're thinking and feeling, and actually what your brain, your body needs. There's so many things out there, terms, labels that tell you you're doing everything wrong and you're not start trusting yourself and what your body needs and not other people's thoughts, feelings and opinions on what you should be doing because every single person is unique and different, every single person. And starting with that little tip a day of just um, letting yourself be, having what you need, It starts to change things and, yeah, it's letting go of the control. Diets and things are all about control and the more you focus on what you're dieting, what you're eating and that control, going to the gym, all of these things, and they're all beneficial but at the right time. Letting go of control and just flowing in what your body needs and your body will naturally take you there and you will naturally change and grow and evolve each and every day. There's magic in self-healing and that is the chemicals that come from your brain. Your imagination is powerful. All you need to do is put a thought out. I am healing myself. Boom, it's done. It is that simple. You've just got to believe it. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Totally agree. You said that tarot had helped you. How had that helped you? It was the story of tarot. It was understanding um, that tarot is explaining the energies of what everybody in this life goes through. We All of our lives play out differently, but the energies that we move through are all the same. And tarot really opened me up to understanding my energy, what I project out into the world, um, and also other people's energy and what energies stick to me from other people. And everyone can read energy. We're just not fully aware of it. Somebody walks in the room, you can tell if they're, they're happy or sad because of our thoughts, our, our, our energies. And I like to imagine it like, You've got all of these thoughts and they're like little clouds popping out of your head, energy bubbles. And when you walk past anyone, you pick them up. And a lot of times you don't even know that it's not your feelings, it's somebody else's stuff. But you've picked up that energy because you're an energetic sponge. And um, Taro really taught me to understand on a day-to-day basis the energies that I was moving through given me more clarity as to how to move through these energies, understanding them a lot more. It really comes with the awareness and understanding of what you're doing and why you're doing it, what your beliefs are and why you believe it 
Is it yours? Is it learned? Or is it from your own personal experience? Because that is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. I did start with tarot. Well, I did used to do tarot many years ago. It was my first deck of cards I ever had was a tarot deck. And then I moved, obviously, into the angels and uh, got stuck with them ever since. And I love it, but I still have a tarot deck that I occasionally dabble with and, you know, do bits of readings just for myself. But they they are fascinating. They're a great tool, aren't they? A deck of cards. Yeah, I, I see them more as a tool of your self journey, self awareness. So I love reading tarot for other people, but they're a brilliant self help tool. And I think that is, um, a lot of the misconception about tarot is that we're just fortune tellers and things like that. Sometimes people's fortunes come out, but I'm not there to tell you you're going to get the big house, the big car, unless it's there for you. Uh, it's more creator tarot, using the tarot to work out and create and move forward in a way, in a positive way you want to. It's all about positive creation, using the tarot as a tool, self-awareness, your your journey and where you want to go. Everything's about you creating it. Yeah, there's some things in this life that um the lessons, the big things that we've that we've got to go through. Some things are set out, but I believe in divine timing, you know, um and I believe that we are the creator of our world through our own beliefs and choices. Mm. So <clears throat> sorry, I've got spirit coming through as well. It's this keeps happening. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of talking today, but I was just wondering, have you always considered yourself a spiritual person? Uh, yeah, well, yes, yeah. It's taken me a while to work out that's what it was, you know. Um, when I was a child, I um, could see, feel and experience the world differently. Um, family members would uh, get <laughs> uh, probably quite stressed with me because when I would go to anybody's house, I would experience the, the ghost, the energy in the home. My dad used to say to me when I walked in the room, it went freezing and it, he was referring to all the ghosts that would follow me. But it wasn't really understood. You know, it was more of a joke. It was more, um, yeah. And because I didn't know what to do with it, I uh, it, it came out and sparks of energy uh, I wouldn't sleep as a child I would have really really strong visuals and be able to see stuff that nobody else could see um, so yeah I guess that's where you know probably some of my my life trouble started was at nine years old I got put on medication um, because it was seen as a mental health condition what I was experiencing because I couldn't articulate it as a child and nobody could articulate it for me. My parents were doing the absolute best they could. And yeah, so I've always seen myself as spiritual in the fact of throughout the years, peppered into my early teens and 20s, I would pick up tarot cards. I trained in a uh, Reiki and I was starting my own Reiki business um, I worked for social work and life was good. This was about 10 years ago, but I wasn't making good life choices. I was still in the conditioning of having to take something to stop feeling. So I would take um, anything willy nilly without even thinking about it. So spirit gave me a huge tower moment and a car crash that ended what I believed would be my career in social work sent me spiraling into major illness, um, physical and, and mental health. So it's no surprise that within that six years of my downfall and turmoil that I ended up completely addicted to um, prescription and non-prescription drugs. And that's something that I feel I had to go through now because to get out of it, I couldn't find anyone that understood anything about what I was going through, Amanda. I reached out to books, professionals, nobody could help me. So one of the most powerful things in my life at the beginning of the healing journey four years ago was I wanted to be that person for someone else. Everything I was learning about myself was to help other people. All I kept holding on to was um, if I could figure this out, if I could figure out that our brains can heal ourselves, our spirit can heal ourselves, then I could teach everybody else. And that's where I'm at. Wow. 
I have got so much respect for you to have come through all of that. I can't tell you because we all have crutches, don't we? You know, and we yeah. all some degree or another. You know, it might be chocolate, it might be tobacco, it might be drugs, it could be alcohol, whatever it is. It could be sex. It can be anything. We all have things that we lean on because we don't allow ourselves to really feel, do we? We're not taught to feel and think. We're taught to stay busy. And after all, we are human beings, but all we seem to be do is be doing, and we should be called human doings, not human beings. <laughs> and if we were, were living what we're supposed to be like human beings, we would be, and we wouldn't be staying busy where we're scrolling. I mean, how many hours a day do we lose scrolling because it numbs out what we're feeling? Yeah. We don't sit. That's what we've all been taught. Yeah. Numb it. Absolutely. Don't feel. Don't feel. Just get on with it. Don't yeah. feel. Push it down. And it, it is scary and painful to start feeling at the beginning. I'm not saying that what I've been through was easy, picking myself up. And I'm still, although I have been um, clean for four years, I have been still picking myself up for them four years, myself worth getting rid of shame, guilt, everything. But it can be done. And the evolution of my growth that's taken me to a business that I didn't even believe at one point in my life was possible. Going through the early stages of bringing all the stuff up, know that there's another side to it, that you will get through it, Mm -hmm. that just keep pushing past it just a tiny little bit every day, bringing these feelings up, becoming aware of them, recognising them. It's really powerful and it will completely change your life in ways that you could never imagine. But we are taught to not feel. Isn't it isn't it crazy? You know, at, at nine years old I got told, no, don't feel, you're not meant to experience the world like this. Um so numb it. Mm-hmm. Numb it. And our brains are conditioned very easily. We're sponges. So it's really looking at where did that conditioning come from? Who were you before that? And if you don't know who you were before that, who do you want to be? Because you really can be anyone and anything that you want to. It's just breaking free of all the society's conditioning and rules of of what you think it should be. You're here to be uniquely you. You're here to be, yeah, that that special ray of light that you were born into your human and to have feelings Mm -hmm. and experience this life. And that's really what I've I want to share with people is be in the now and experience this life. Yeah. I was brought up in the era of children should be seen and not heard. And that was a big belief that I've had to sort of work through in my own journey. And you know, there's no right and there's no wrong. Everyone parents differently. And there's no one thing I've learned, especially with doing, you know, the, the journey I've been on, the work that I do with NLP as well, that, you know, there is, there's no finger of blame that we're, we're going, oh, my parents no. did wrong or anything like that. No, everyone's doing the best they can with what they have within them. But there is no better journey. You know, I've got to say, I absolutely love learning about me. I learn something new about me all the time. And every time I'm like, oh, God, I didn't know that about me. Oh, I'm, I am a transformed person. I'm not the same person as I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and certainly not 30 years ago, I am very, very different. And I love learning about me and trying to be the best version of me I possibly can. I'm not perfect, nowhere near, and nobody is. But I do find it fascinating, you know, peeling back another layer and learning yeah. about myself. But I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't, one, quiet, if I wasn't still, because if I'm always racing around, I don't give myself time to process anything or learn anything. So I have to be still. I have to be quiet. I have to know my places to connect. Um, you know, and my favorite places to connect are generally in water. I love journaling, but I appreciate everybody doesn't love journaling. You know, all those things, I have all those tools that I can use to learn, you know, more about myself. What are some of your favorite things that you like to do to learn more about yourself there's a few um and like everything else they have evolved over the years 
at the very beginning of my healing journey, there was a lot of journaling, a lot of journaling, a lot of reading, a lot of working things out, the thoughts that I was having, the beliefs that I was having. The things that I do now are I spend a lot of time in nature. I love to be in the woods, amongst trees, just like you're saying there, Amanda, taking time to be still and process, letting your brain have a chance to work through the thoughts, work it out. I love being near water too. I'm very fortunate. I've got a forest on one side and a beach on the other. So, And I've got a little dog and that's where I spend a lot of my time is the beach or the forest. I also meditate a lot. And meditation is just another label. I do it in different um, kind of ways. So I will listen to music. I like to actually listen to quite loud music. Um, It helps slow my brainwaves down. I also like to listen to different frequencies. Um, For me, a lot of the tools I use are directed at the brain and slowing the brain down. Anything that will slow your brain down, like frequencies, like meditation, whether you do meditation with or without music. A lot of what I do is also guided visualizations. I find these are very powerful for helping you get clarity and also create what it is that you want in your life. Other spiritual tools, I um, love sound therapy. A lot of, a lot of it is music and sound. Mm-hmm. It's all energy for me. Okay. All energy. I used to do the cards a lot for myself, but I don't do that. I actually find it very healing doing the work that I do. Um, talking to other people and learning as well. I, I'm not just there for my clients. My clients are teaching me and that's what I find fascinating. And I want to hit on something you just said a minute ago is, um, becoming excited about learning about yourself. I think that's the biggest tool is um, actually realising that your human is fascinating. It's a whole thing all by itself. It's got a brain, it's got chemicals, it's got your subconscious mind that that works all your body and really starting to find yourself fascinating. And also I laugh at myself a lot. That is one, that is another tool I want to, to give you is I laugh at myself a lot mm-hmm. when um, I'm having any kind of thought, a negative thought, I laugh at it and um, let it go. Mm-hmm. But that again has been evolution and it does take time to get there. But it is, it's, it's just managing your thoughts daily and also doing a lot of not thinking. As you've done NLP and I've done hypnosis as well. The the main thing I loved about learning in that was think less, <laughs> you know, think less. One of the tools they gave me was anytime you've got the thoughts looping in your brain, because I've got a very, very busy brain, thoughts looping in your brain, just tell your brain, shh, shh, be quiet. Mm-hmm. Give yourself a break. We're Give so yourself- in our heads, aren't we? We are so in our heads. Yeah. So anything to ground, anything to ground yourself. Water, walking, being in nature is a big thing and it is more healing than I think most people could ever imagine. It's just being amongst nature. A movement. If you're feeling stuck in an energy, stuck in a thought loop, you'll have an energy block that you think it won't change and you can't move. Uh Get up and move, put a song that you love on and dance around the room Uh and it will change your energy instantly. Yeah. Find what you like. Find what you like. Because that gets you out of your head and into your body, doesn't it? When you, yeah. you know, your head is where you are stuck, it's where the mindset is created. But if you are, like you say, in a negative loop, if you can get into your body, you can move through that. And of course, yeah. we're talking here like this, we're making it sound really easy, but we know it's not <laughs> that easy, don't we? We know that we all get in our own way and we all trip ourselves up. Um, yeah. So I still you, do all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and I have um I have a list of I call them things to do when I'm feeling blue. List. Love that. Um mm-hmm. yeah, and you know, when I am in a funk, I my job is to get myself out of funk as quick as possible because as long mm-hmm. as I'm staying in a funk, I'm just manifesting more funk and I don't want any of that. So My biggest reset, if I, you know, all the usual things don't work, like, you know, 
being in water you know journaling music all of those things that I have on my list my actual reset is going to sleep and yes sl- yes yeah, sleep with a very clear intention that when I wake up I will be in a better frame of mind because so yes. much happens when we are sleeping and so much can happen in terms of connection with the upstairs and you know, healing and astral traveling and all of that amazing stuff and dreaming. But that's my absolute, you know, that's the, you know, when the electrical things go wrong and you have to unplug them and restart, that's mine is to sleep it through and wake up in a better frame of mind. What's your one thing that you do to reset yourself? Same. Sleep. Absolutely. Um, a big part of the first couple of years of my healing journey was sleeping. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had to get past um, and over the the feelings that I had inside myself that I was doing something wrong. Because, you know, what you're going for a nap or you've not done anything, you're being lazy, you're being, um, yeah, you should be going out exercising. No, sleep is so important. Your body is healing while you sleep. Your mind is healing while you sleep. And I think it's really important what you said there. Before you go to sleep, set an intention that I'm going to wake up feeling better. Mm -hmm. Because when we are lying down to go to sleep, that can be sometimes when most negative thoughts come in. All of the things you did that day or didn't do that day. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we're talking about here. It's going and laying down with the intention of giving yourself a moment Mm -hmm. of knowing that actually you're doing something really healthy for yourself. You're letting your body um, regulate itself. You're you're regulating your own nervous system by having a lay down. Yeah. And switching off and that having a sleep. Uh-huh. So I highly recommend it and I do it often. Yeah. Sleep. Good. Yeah. And as you were talking about that, I was getting prompted by spirit to ask you another question. And uh-huh. the, the question is, cause obviously you've, you've been on a journey similar to mine by the sounds of it in terms of experience spirit when you were younger, but not really supported with that. And, There was always Mm -hmm. far more many people at a party than most other people could see in my book because I could see, you know, spirit clearly. And then I shut down for many years before I opened back up again. And now I don't see as often as or as clearly as I used to see as a child. And you have spoke about how you receive. And I think obviously you've got clairvoyance and clairaudience going on. So when we are communicating with spirit and I got the the privilege of seeing you do that live in front of other people. And I know that you do platform work and you were great. You were amazing. How do you know? Because I know a lot of people will be wondering, well, how do you know if it's spirit or are you making it up? That took um, that took a lot of practice, um, a lot of working with complete strangers so that I could understand exactly how it worked for me. I learned off of a few different teachers but it was one in particular that really helped me get to aim at practicing and really helped me understand all of the pictures images and feelings and thoughts in my head that were coming through was undeniably spirit all of the things that were coming out of my mouth that when I was talking to complete strangers was the reassurance that I needed that the way I seen it which is through visuals, I when I'm giving readings, it's like a movie starts playing inside my mind, but it kind of projects out in front of me. But it's practice. And a lot of that practice came from doing guided visualizations as well, because it's a muscle. Your clear voice is a muscle, your clear audience, all of these things are all valves that you need to stretch and open. Everybody's got all of them. But you, the more you practice, the more you start to understand how it works for yourself. And then you start to really feel the energy, the energy shift, the energy change. It's very subtle. So I do have to take care of myself in the way that I know exactly how I feel before I'm given a reading. I get all of my own thoughts out of the way, everything in my life out of the way by going for a walk beforehand. And when I'm reading for somebody, it's like I switch a, I switch a switch on. 
for whatever service I'm giving somebody. So if it's evidential mediumship, I imagine a switch, a switch on evidential mediumship. Um, I see the words in big glowing lights above my head and I know we're there. I know we're in the frequency because it's energy is frequency and spirit are frequency. So it's tapping into that frequency. But it is, it's practice, practice, practice. It's getting over the fear of talking. Mm-hmm. It's really getting over the fear of talking and it's really getting over the fear of just spitting out everything that comes into your brain feelings everything Mm -hmm. and you start to really surprise yourself really (laughs) surprise yourself yeah um it's it's exciting it's the it's the most wonderful feeling and experience i've ever experienced in this life naturally is the connection and working with spirit it takes practice it takes belief and it takes working with people that you don't know that's one of the most important things yeah Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I saw you so like spirits will jump in then. But I would yeah. say that it's really about trusting what you're receiving, isn't it? It's about not having to understand it yourself. Because I know when I was earlier in the journey, I wanted to understand what spirit were giving me. My job is not to understand. And it's the same working with the angels. I have no idea what's going to fall out my mouth. I just yeah. allow them to work through me and, you know, just deliver what I'm getting. I don't need to understand it. If you, yeah, that, sorry. You know, well, if you had some advice to somebody, you know, maybe starting out on this journey, you know, the spiritual journey, what advice would that be? That absolutely nothing stops your connection with spirit apart from your own belief. Nothing. If you can just switch on that feeling that it's real, Spirit want to communicate with you. They want to work through you, whatever modality you want to do that, whatever creative way that you want to express spirit. It's about believing that it is possible. And also when you start sharing that, it's exactly like you said, it's getting out of your own way and not trying to work it out. You'll never work out why or how, and that can mess with your head for quite a long time. All I had to do was work out how it worked for me, so that when I was sitting working with clients, I knew how to switch it on for myself. But the actual words and thoughts and feelings and everything that comes through, if I start to work out what they're telling me, why, I get in my own way and I can't talk. I just have to say everything that's coming through because it won't make sense to me, and it won't make sense to you when you start speaking it out to people but it makes sense to your sitter even the most strangest little things that come out of your mouth have been the most profound things for my sitters Mm -hmm. and that's where the magic is is being brave and actually just working with somebody whether you want to do it through healing whether you want to do it through art whether you want to do it through mediumship or psychic is just talking and expressing getting it out in a safe place where um, people want you to do well. That's that's another thing. Make sure that you're around people that want you to do well. It's really important in your, in your spiritual journey to find like-minded people, to find people that resonate with you and understand you. Because the minute you step back and try to, re- like for reading for family members, oh, no, oh. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a no-go. Even friends, you know, um, people that know you, I find that really difficult. Although I've I've done it a few times recently, but that's because I've got more confident and I understand what I'm doing now. Um, but certainly in the beginning, don't read for family, don't read for friends. You're not going to get that response that you need to grow. Um, so yeah, seek out seek out strangers who who want the best for you. Mm-hmm. Good advice, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely easy to read for strangers or easier. I think it's easy to read, to be fair, if you totally trust, but it is easier to read for strangers than it is for friends yes. and family. And certainly the hardest person to read for is yourself, isn't it? Yes. Uh, although in the beginning, that was how I got confident, by reading for myself. But now, along my journey, I I don't read for myself at all. I actually find it more difficult. 
But I guess it's probably because they're telling me things I don't want to hear, like have patience. That comes up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get knocky, don't they? <laughs> yeah. But certainly at the, at the beginning of opening up to your abilities, um, do it around like-minded people and stay away from reading for, from friends and families. They're a lot more critical, whereas um, finding yourself with, amongst people that want to learn and grow in the same area that you do is really beneficial. That will really speed up the process. And then a few years down the line, like yourself and like I'm doing now, um, you will be able to read for friends and family because you're more confident and you you know your abilities. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good advice. So what does the, the future look like for you? What are you planning to manifest? What have you got in store for yourself? Because I know you're quite capable of manifesting whatever it is that you want. <laughs> so what's, what's up the sleeve there, Pam, for you? Oh, so many things. Where do I even begin? So my business is new, Eagle Spirit Healing. Um, I, my, my dream is just to continue to help people, to continue to share my story and um, maybe get it in writing one day and help people see who they are and the magical healing powers that we've got that aren't so magical. They're just innate in us and make that normal. Mm-hmm. I want to help a lot of people at the same time, Amanda. But for me in my life, I want a peaceful, happy life now. That's it. To keep growing and learning and enjoying this life. I spent so many years in misery and ill health that really my my own personal future is just health and happiness and experiences, experiencing everything that this life has to give. Mm-hmm. And sharing that with everybody that I can. Yeah. Just spreading the love. Just spreading the love. That's it. <laughs> the lovely thing to do, though, isn't it? It really yeah. is. The world needs yeah. more love. It definitely needs more love. That's a good thing to do. I, my my dream career-wise um, would be to be an, a, a motivational speaker. So I'm sure my evolution and growth will take me to that. So we'll see. But at the moment, I love mediumship readings. I love helping people transform their own lives. And I'm really happy right now. So I spent a long time manifesting myself to get here. Mm -hmm. And I feel I'm just in a kind of place of where I want to enjoy it for a bit. Yeah. I want to enjoy it. Good plan. Good plan. So where can people find you when uh, they're looking for your? Is it on social media or do you have a website? Yep, I've got a website, eaglespirithealing.co.uk and I'm on Facebook, Pamela McDougall Medium and I've also started putting some of my hypnosis and guided visualisations on YouTube so you'll be able to find me on there as well, Pamela Medium. Oh, lovely, thank you. Well, it'll all be in the show notes for people anyway so they'll be able to find you and it's been so, so lovely talking to you today, Pam. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me, Amanda. It's been great to chat to you. And I know we'll continue to chat much, much more. We will. Uh, Thank you. We will. Thank you, Pamela. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit follow and share my message by sharing with your friends. It would be amazing if you can leave a review. All this will help and it activates a universal law of the more you give, the more you receive. So it's a win-win. You can find more good stuff between episodes over on social media. Just search The Angel Mystic on Facebook, Instagram or TikTok or check out the links in the show notes. I'd love for you to connect more over in my free group in Abundance Manifesting all on Facebook. Hope to see you there.